What's going on guys? In this episode, we are picking up where we left off on the last one with the wiring for the custom headlights for the R56 Mini Cooper. We get all the wiring finished, get the lights working and everything. Then we get the RGB wiring done and all the RGB goodies working as well. So stay tuned. All right guys, we're continuing where we left off here. So I'm gonna actually pull out this relay harness since we're not gonna be using it. And also clean up some of the wiring on this headlight, like just zip tying, getting things tidy. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish up this headlight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> MD, JPB, it's only right, baby. Yeah, why you mad? I got a bad bro. Name hot in these streets, no Tabasco. But I'm so stuck, that's a fact, yo. And if you think I'm running, you can run it back, yo. Go on, run it back. You know that I run it. Everything you want to do, I already done it. And I got your little boo telling me she's... All right, so I, I ripped this guy pretty good here. So I put some liquid tape on it to kind of seal it up. Because I don't want a big hole going into the headlight. I do have a replacement, one of those grommets. I could drill out the center and put the wires through it. But I think I'm just going to leave that. Put some more liquid tape on here because there was some exposed wire. While that's drying, I went and bought some of these. These are, this running light's burnt out, so I just bought, you know, a regular pair of these. I would throw some LEDs in there, but then you gotta worry about hooking up those resistors. These won't throw a code, and these are kind of, they're the wider ones or whatever, so they'll look pretty good. This bumper with these lights are gonna get swapped out eventually anyway, so didn't really wanna bother with LEDs and just wanted to get it taken care of right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw this stuff in. Well, damn, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. You know. I said, uh, I said, damn, it's gonna be a long night. Yeah. All right, so that light works. The bright solenoid isn't working for some reason, but the headlight, the low beam does work. And when you turn the high beams on, the light does stay on. So we'll have the high beam from the one side at least. And I'll, I'll look into that solenoid, figure out why that's not working. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to wire up the DRLs for both headlights. So we're going to do this and the power for the DRLs. And then last but not least, we're going to wire up the RGB. Alright, so I finished up, tested both DRLs on both headlights, they are working. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a, a wire that's long enough to go from here to there. I don't have enough red wire left, so I'm going to solder two together so I don't have to buy more. And I'm also going to figure out why the brights aren't working on this side. I'm also going to solder some uh, wire extensions onto here for this controller so that they can reach the battery. Okay, so we've almost made it here. All that we have left, I have this wire that can go to this headlight now and come up here. All we have left is to cut this wire. We're gonna put an inline fuse in here. And then on the other end of that fuse, we're gonna connect this wire, this wire, and this wire together so that we can have the RGB and the DRL all running off of that one fuse. I looked into the brights issue here. I can I can hear the solenoid triggering, but it's not lifting. It's not opening and letting the brights turn on on this one headlight. I think the maybe the demon eye inside there is installed weird or or something like that. Something is interfering with that bright solenoid, and I'm not going to be able to fix it without pulling this whole headlight apart. So we're just not going to have brights on one headlight. 
and we'll have them on the other one. It'll, it'll still be okay. We'll still have the headlight coming on no matter what, whether the brights or low beams are on. It's just not going to be raised on one side, which will be good enough for me. So if I ever have to take these apart for whatever reason, I'll fix it. But for now, this is fine. So all we gotta do is that one last thing, put in that inline fuse, route the wires, like plug everything in and put everything back together. All right, so I got the inline fuse. I'm not gonna hook it up just yet. I'm gonna bolt the headlights in and put the grill back in and then start running the wires because everything needs to be in this area before I can hook them all up to the inline fuse. All right, we're coming over to this side now. I have this inline fuse holder. This is going to be the fuse for both the DRL and the RGB stuff. They're gonna both go into the same wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up and then we can start testing the headlights out. All right, so what we have here are small anti-flickering capacitors. These were actually hooked up to the DRL. Previously, they were spliced in not very well, but they were hooked up. And I noticed that after getting everything back together, turning the lights on at night, not only is the DRL flickering really bad, the HIDs don't work anymore either. So they work, everything works fine with the car off. Once you start the car, they don't work. So we do have to use that hacked up relay harness with the resistors in place for the headlights to get the headlights to work and we do have to use these i thought these were just some cheap resistors but these are capacitors for anti-flickering i thought the drl would be fine because it's spliced into a factory halogen bulb down here so it's not tricking the computer but the power that's sent to those bulbs is like a surging power which will cause leds to flicker so you have to install this so what i did here is i made it plug and play so we just have to plug this side in where the DRL plugs in, and then down here we just have to ground this side. All right, and it was hard to see, but the flickering is completely gone now with those capacitors in place which is exactly what I was looking for. I don't know if I mentioned with the RGBs as well, we're not able to get the RGBs working right now because the, the JST plugs are actually different and they're not compatible and I don't feel like cutting and splicing the wires, I just wanna get adapters. So I'm gonna order those on Amazon and they should be in and then I'll, I'll put that on the video. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and get the HID bulbs working. Okay, so I did figure this out. It was fairly easy. The way that this is plugged in is we have it plugged into the power up here and there's a fuse right here. I'll try to explain this a little bit better. Here's where the harness plugs in. I'm gonna redo this section. But what happens is right here where the harness plugs into the headlight input, it comes around here and then that's where you plug in your resistor resistors ground to here as well as the ballast the ballast is also ground to here and then on this side we have the ballast ground to here as well as the resistors but the resistors are plugged directly into the headlight output of this headlight so right here we have this coming in normally this would plug directly into the ballast but because this is getting triggered by that headlights input we are able to just take this plug right here plug it directly into the resistors and then ground them. 
so that it thinks that it's powering a light bulb on this side, but it's not. This side thinks that it's powering a light bulb, but it's not. Really what's powering the HID bulbs is the battery directly. The output of this light is being used as the signal, but the resistors are tied into both the output of this light and the output of this light so that the car thinks that there's a regular headlight in there. So now all we have to do, since this high beam output isn't used, what I'm going to do is cut this off and splice it in right here so that we have an actual plug going in here. And then I'm just going to hide all this wiring. All right, now if we look at this wiring harness here, and we take a look at one of the uh, ballast sections right here, you can see the high beam was right here, which are, they're both cut off on both sides, but I capped them off so they can't touch. They won't cause any problems. Because the headlights worked, I just finalized the wiring that was there before. Right here, all these were twisted together. I'm not sure exactly what this modification does, but I know that the headlights work. So I just went ahead and undid what was already on there and redid it with this high beam plug from the other part of the harness. This way everything is just plug and play. There's no weird connectors or electrical tape or anything like that. This thing's ready to go in the car. And then these technically have to be mounted. I was told that they get pretty hot. I'm not gonna mount them for right now because I'm having trouble finding a place where I actually can mount them. The only things I can see is I can mount them way down there to the frame rail, or I could mount them inside the wheel well right here. Like, I think they'll fit right here. I can have two of them. But I don't really want screws sticking through here, so maybe if they're, I don't know, I was thinking maybe if I did like rib nuts or something, but then it would have to be mounted on the outside. I actually don't know how I would do that. So I'm leaning towards the frame rail, but that's like the only metal places that you can mount it. I mean, I could mount it in sight, but I don't want to do that either. There's not really any room back here behind the headlight, and the, the rest of what's around this headlight is just all plastic, and you can't mount them to plastic. So I'm just going to leave them hanging for now on both sides. Same thing with the ballasts. The ballasts I'm actually going to tuck in right here. There's like a nice spot where they fit and they won't move. So I'm just going to go ahead and tuck those in. I'm going to rip this cowl off again so that I can wire everything up and get it as hidden as possible. So I didn't realize this, but I was stupid and put a male end on here. I don't have a female end. So for now, I went ahead and made a really shady adapter. I'm going to go ahead and electrical tape this into the plugs the rest of the way. And I'm just going to purchase either a female plug online or an adapter that can just plug in so I can be done. But either way, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do that. But for now, I'm just going to electrical tape that up and then zip tie all the wires and put everything back together. All right, so as you can see, we got our headlights on, we got our DRL working, these lights on the front are working, everything's all good. So we'll pick back up on this when we do the RGB stuff. All right, so we are back out here now working on the RGB colors for these headlights. I have the Morimoto XBT wired back up again, and then if we look here, the issue we were dealing with is that we have these types of connectors, which I believe are called JST connectors, on this end, on the Morimoto XBT end, and then on the other end, going to the headlights, we have these types of four pin connectors, which I think is fairly standard. Typically you plug these in and then you tape them together, which is what we're going to be doing. But these don't really work, just plugging them in here and taping them together. So what I ended up doing is I bought both connectors, 
as pigtails and we are going to have to wire them together. So as you can see on, on this end, I have one plugged in right here. It goes to these wires and then we have these ones right here where we will just wire them together and then they'll plug in here. Now, the, the issue that we were seeing before when I was getting them to work is that the colors were wrong. And this is because the wires are in a different order. If you can look in here, you see we have from the right to left, black, red, blue, green. And on this one, we have black, green, red, blue. So plugging these in, they're going to work, but the app is not gonna give the right colors to the headlights. So also what we have to do is rewire these. They're, they're not gonna go to the right colors. The other issue that we have here is we have black, red, blue, green, and on this, this only plugs in one way, and we have blue, red, green, black. So we actually have to completely ignore the colors of these wires and look at their positions instead, because this blue wire is actually going to be the ground. On the other side, we do not have to ignore the colors. So, basically, the way that this is going to work, you can see this is black, green, red, blue, black, green, red, blue, so these are the same. So what we need to do is plug this in. That's plugged in. This is gonna get electrical tape together. I suppose that I could heat shrink over top of it, but just because I don't want it to be completely permanent, we're just gonna leave it electrical tape for now. So then we need to rearrange these wires. This is going to get kind of confusing. So because this one is black, red, green, blue, this black is still going to be ground on this end, so we're gonna flip these over. And we just have to swap. We actually have to swap all three of these. So as you can see here, green is gonna go to the far left side, blue is gonna go to the middle, and uh, red is gonna go to the right. So basically, all we're doing is we're taking out this green wire and we're moving it to this far left side of this wire and connecting it to here. So what this is gonna be, it's gonna be black to blue, red to red, blue to green, and green to black. Sounds super confusing, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it really quick and just show you that it works. Okay, so as you can see, I got it hooked up exactly as I said, black to green, green to blue, red to red, and then black to blue. I know this is super confusing, but you have to just understand that I'm hooking up to the positions of the wires, not the colors. It is possible for me to depin these connectors and rearrange the wires so that it would just be color to color, but that is so much extra work if I got to do soldering anyway, because I already know what I'm doing and which wires need to go to which ones, and these are just pigtail adapters. It's not like I'm wiring the whole actual light. So anyway, I did just break one of the connectors. So I, in order to test all of the different lights, I'm not really going to actually worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead and make these pigtail connectors. But anyway, I can, I can show you now that the colors do match. So we have red here and we have red on the light. If I drag this down to green, my hand's frozen. So my phone's not really responding. Then we have green on the light, blue and so forth purple over here so the colors do match now so that's good we're just gonna go ahead and create a handful of those pigtails actually six of them well first I'm gonna double check every output on the XBT and then I'm gonna go ahead and create those pigtails <laughs> Okay, so I already made one of these little pigtail connectors. It works just fine. My RGBs and the headlights are starting to go bad in a couple of the headlights, which we're gonna have to fix in a different video. But I'm just gonna go ahead and get the wiring done in this video so you guys can see what's going on. Here I have a little cheat sheet. On, on this side, we have what's going to the RGB lights themselves. And then on this side, we have going to the Morimoto XBT. Now, remember, these are just the locations of the wires. On this side, this is actually the real colors of the wires. So this is what the Morimoto XBT takes. It has black on the far right, then red, blue, green. Traditionally, you have black, green, red, blue. So what we need to do is switch the order of these three around. 
basically what happens is green gets moved out of right here and goes to the top. And that's, that's the only difference between traditional and Morimoto. The problem with this side is this is also wired traditionally, but the Morimoto plug is upside down. So we have to flip this over, which makes it so that we no longer have colors going to matching colors. We're actually going to have blue to black, red to red, blue to green, and then black to green on this side. Basically exactly what it says right there. So what I'm gonna do is strip these wires I'm gonna put heat shrink on each one so that we have four heat shrinked wires and then I'm gonna put one big heat shrink over top all of it to make it look really clean. These look kind of like sprinkles. Anyway, got these all done. I messed up the first one and put a male connector on the end instead of a female. So I had to cut that one apart and redo it. But they're all here now. So technically, they're plug and play. Technically now the Morimoto XBT is plug and play. I need to replace one of the connectors on the actual car with one of these because it broke. So I'm going to go ahead. I need to do that. And then I have the female connector for the HID harness. I'm going to go ahead and put that on as well. All right. So we're out in the garage now. I'm going to go ahead and take this all apart. Unplug this little wiring harness that I made to get the headlights to plug in. And we're going to replace this. This is a male connector right here. We're gonna replace this with a female connector. So we're actually gonna pull it out from back here, cut away the heat shrink, undo the solder, and uh, solder the new one on. Okay, so all the wiring's kind of cleaned up. Everything's folded up and tucked back here with the Morimoto on top. It's a little bit of a mess, but there's just so much extra wiring in there. I really need to just like cut and resolder some of it to make it shorter. But I think I'm just gonna leave it. I think it's fine. Up here, one of the channels in the Demon Eye started working again, but the red channel in the Halo is still not really working. So I think we're gonna end up having to pull this headlight apart and replace some of the RGB internals. This one's 100% fine, but I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this cover back on and be done for now. So I realized I didn't explain very well exactly what I did to these headlights besides rewiring them. They were a little bit unreliable, cutting in and out, things like that. That's why I completely redid all of the wiring and the wiring was messy in the engine bay. So now it's all cleaned up and I wanna show you how they work and the problems that I'm still having with them. So the car is off right now, and first of all, I wanted to show how the DRLs work now. They used to only come on when those lower lights came on because the power wire was hooked up to those. Now the power wire is hooked up to the battery, so the DRLs will come on with the turn signals and everything. So like if I unlock the car or lock it, you see that they, uh, they turn on like that. So that's pretty cool. And then I also want to show you the RGBs. All right, so I have just the ring on right now. It's kind of hard to see because it's so bright. But the on here, you can change them to white and in doing so, actually fried the red ring or the red channel on this side first and then I did it another time and it fried this channel. So just controlling this, changing them to white, 
fried the channel. This didn't work on the other, or this didn't happen with the other controller, so something with the XBT controller is more powerful. These are just probably some eBay LEDs. Now the red channel doesn't work, so if I put them to red, they like kind of flicker and they're, they're blue and blue or green and they flicker in between. So that's a huge bummer. So with the Demon Eyes, the green channel doesn't work on either of them, which was already happening on the other controller. It worked for a little bit while I was hooking these up and then it stopped working again. So we have a broken green channel in the Demon Eyes and a broken red channel in the Halos. The other light, the middle light here, works perfectly fine all of the colors. So it's a little bit of a bummer that I spent this much time on this and that it doesn't work the exact way that I want. I'm gonna have to tear them apart and replace the insides, but then all should be good. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Make sure that if you like it, you give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share it. That helps me out a whole lot. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. And thank you so much for watching. Peace out.